Anyone that predicts where the luxury market is going next is about as likely to get it right, I think, as someone trying to predict where my cat will sleep tonight. After all, there are only a limited number of options for sure, but there are too many unknown variables for any of us to be wholly confident. So when Bain & Co released their predictions recently for where the luxury market's heading, I thought it was a good idea to dig a bit deeper. They predicted seven developments, and I found three which I thought if they were to converge, they might produce something which is far more challenging. If you haven't seen the latest release and you would like a copy, please stay listening for about another 60 seconds, and I'll give you a link at the end. Among the predictions which Bain made were some which I would call, if I lock the cat in the kitchen, she'll sleep in the kitchen. They're no brainers, such as Chinese shoppers accounting for a larger share of the global luxury market or digital permeating every purchase. And there are some predictions which I would call if I leave the kitchen door open you know she might end up sleeping on my bed. They're possibles such as luxury mono brand stores going the same way as music stores or bookstores though I think perhaps that's more a function of whether you're operating in the premium space or the true luxury space. And there are some predictions which I would call if I leave all the doors open, do you really think she'll go and sleep in the washing basket on top of all my sweaty gym kit? These are outliers, such as religious subcultures substantially affecting consumption. But as I say, there were three predictions that I thought if they were to happen and converge in the luxury space, they might produce something far more challenging. The first is a cat in the kitchen. This is the rise of Gen Y and Gen Z as a spending force. The second is a cat asleep on the bed. These are increasingly fickle customers getting bored sooner and maybe then expecting brands to innovate faster and be more agile. The third prediction is a definitely a cat asleep on the gym kit, which is the prediction that to survive, luxury brands must either become super specialists or super generalists. Now, if these predictions do happen and do converge, and I admit it's a big if, then what we'll see is a number of luxury brands in danger of trying to respond faster and faster to faster moving markets and undermining their own core offering. In that scenario, the only brands that survive will be those who are clear on what they stand for and clear on their values. They will be able to maintain profitability as that strength of purpose and vision draws customers to them and allows them to stay focused on what they do best. The truth today is that most luxury brands are already experiencing unstable markets and fickle customers. For them, having a clear vision and a unifying story which aligns the whole organisation is already critical. We have a lot of respect for Bain and I believe that in an increasingly complex market, you do also need a mix of the rigour of the consultants with some of the breakthrough techniques of the creative world. I remember when we helped the leadership team at Hunter Boot with their repositioning back in 2012. The rigorous thinking helped us get to a market space that was possible, but it was the breakthrough thinking that we learned in the creative world that helped us take advantage and help uh, Hunter take advantage rather of that uh, market space. Double digit growth followed and really, you know, the rest, as they say, is history. And that's actually what we do. We help ambitious leaders of premium luxury and ultra luxury brands define and align and grow their brands through the uh, power of one vision, one story and one voice. As I promised, uh, the Bain report is called The Future of Luxury and Looking Tomorrow. If you can't find it, email me and I'll send you a copy. If you're not sure whether your company has a strong guiding vision, try our 15 minute diagnostic tool. It's been built out of the learnings from our successful strategic repositioning projects with companies such as Hunter, but also Harry Winston, Votary, Bellstaff, Tourneau and many others. And as always, if you'd like to learn more about what we do, hear where my cat slept last night or to ask any questions, I'd love to hear from you. Just email me chris at verbalidentity.com. Thank you.